going on guys? It's your boy, Big Blue Drew 97 here to talk to you about my hero academia. Yeah, manga chapter 249 titled, and I kiss you not, Todoroki Sons Hellish Home. Yeah, this is not a very like happy go lucky chapter. I mean, it kind of is, but for the most part, we get hardcore emotional sadness. And we get a lot. Basically, what we begin in the past few chapters is just like a whole lot of development for Todoroki, as well as a whole lot of dev, dev, and, and, uh, endeavor here's growth as well. And to start off this chapter, we start off with um, something that we didn't know about Endeavor. Uh, he goes to sleep. I mean, yeah, that was real surprising to me. Like, the greatest hero ever? sleeps yeah but no 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 in actual reality uh what we first go over in like the first like few panels is basically endeavor um having a dream where uh and apparently he's been having this dream for a while probably as long as like he's been like thinking about uh basically rekindling like his uh family ties with his family and trying to uh basically like appease or repent for what he has done so this dream comes out in that kind of sense where he's dreaming about his family, uh, but there's just, just 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 one problem. There's two problems, but the main problem that he sees now is that he's not with the table. He sees uh, his wife, he sees Shoto, he sees Natsu, he sees Fumui. Fu Fumui! Oh gosh, her name is very hard to pronounce. But uh, Shoto's sister, he sees them all around the table and he's not there. So this shows that he truly wants to uh, do what right by his family but he realizes that even if he does that he may not even really be a part of it so we get this realization immediately cut to uh, basically where uh shoto bakugo and deku have been for the past like week during this ring rake which really enough uh, apparently we had even more development for uh endeavors hero agency uh where we learned that um all the sidekicks have boarding in his agency, meaning that they all stay together, which makes sense in an agency as big as he is. It's like, you can't just have like people like around the city when you have like the biggest organization ever, they all have to be together. So this is like more sense building upon that. And basically they've uh, just been living here the entire time. And we immediately see, uh, if I remember her name correctly, Burning introducing herself, being lively, energetic, welcoming the little kid. And uh, what's funny is that Bob goes like, it's too early for this. And Endeavor is always, and uh, Deku is always to say hello. And then she starts like doing like her normal shit of like, basically like giving like side insults to the kids uh basically and telling it's like oh yeah uh how have y'all been doing on y'all uh, ability to catch up to uh, endeavor oh my bad no it's not really that easy but he you know, it's it's fine it's okay if you fail and then you just see shelter walking it's like yeah well i mean yeah we actually we're getting really close uh yeah especially over the past few days we're getting real close to uh getting uh to Endeavor's level. By the way, good morning, Vernon. And like everyone, Bakugo makes his comment, Deku makes his comment. And uh, something interesting that Burn notices is that they have like scratches on their body. And she finally comes to the conclusion, like, oh yeah, they don't need motivation anymore. Which kind of puts into perspective what she was doing this entire time. Where she was trying to like, in a way, motivate the kids by like trying to put them down in a sense. Like lifting Shoto up, not just because like Shoto is Endeavor's uh, child and she thinks extremely highly of him, but also just to lift the other two up as well. So this gives a little bit more perspective on like how Byron, she might've seemed annoying at first, but what she was actually doing is like motivating these kids to do better and it sort of kind of works. And so for the next few uh, chapters, we just see the kids uh, basically like in being doing hero work, going across the city, um, trying their best to outdo Endeavor to very little success. Apparently they've come close and from what we see in this chapter, um, they're they're far behind but not significantly like maybe like one or two like more like steps behind them so they're very cursed so like close so endeavor like takes off this grunt and during this time he thinks about like the conversation that she he had with um fum, uh give me a second fum, 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 
with, with with his daughter i can't pronounce her name and how she wants them to come to, to dinner how they want to become a real family so while he's thinking about this he's telling these kids to let's go and then we immediately cut and this is a good cut when he's like yes so and there's like all right let's go yes sir we cut to the uh tokoyami home which is like it's really a traditional japanese home which makes sense since like this is like the home that uh Todoroki uh Shoto I'm um, gonna have to use the first name Shoto lived and he also made his room like that so it makes sense that his house is very Japanese style and as soon as like we get like a cut to like the kids and Endeavor we just hear, have Bakugo say but why because it's Bakugo he always screams and basically Shoto's like yeah we were invited to dinner he's like but why because they want to be my friends well tell them we're not your friends that's the, how the conversation goes and Dick is just like Kachara stop and then we see Fuyumi and uh, she's just bubbly and exciting and like just filled with positive energy and is welcoming Shoto and her friends into her home and this is how I know that Bakugo has some form of matters that when he's screaming he's doing it on purpose because he's like entering the room and she's like oh my gosh I'm so sorry for inviting you on, sh on short notice it's so good to see you and he just walks in he's like crouching in like behind the door and he's like but why he doesn't scream he's like but why and it's just like just shows either he really likes Fuyumi which I understand she's very attractive and has a very bountiful personality if i should say but yeah and then uh not and then also shota realizes oh yo is my brother here not to here he's just like oh yeah uh he's gonna be here as well which it's gonna be fun because as we know with Natsu, uh, he really has a fiery temper and is just quick to anger when it comes to his father. And we're not talking about that stupid dragon slayer either. We're talking about the real Natsu, the only Natsu that matters. Shoto's brother. But yeah, we also cut to them just sitting around the table. Everyone looks like they're having a good time. Everyone's eating the food. The food apparently is great because obviously, um, Deku just overanalyzes the food while Bakugo just tells him to shut up. You know, the normal shtick. But then it gets a little serious with uh, Natsu. is like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 This the food is good, uh, yeah. Uh, we used to have uh, someone who would cook for us, but uh, she hurt her back and had to retire, so uh, Fuyumi had to take over. Uh, yeah, and he's, everyone's like, oh, wow, yeah, this cooking is good. And it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, also, like, um, I, yeah, she's doing all this work. I would help, too, but unfortunately, uh, my cooking didn't live up to someone's standards. And you just see Natsu just eyeball Endeavor. And in the background, you see, like, the black screen with, like, the lightning, which shows, like, like the uh, manga equivalent to, like, tension in a way. Or, like, something is, like, there's so, like it's just so much in the room like so much tension so much like awkwardness in the room that you can like just see it that's what it is and we just see like bakugo and um uh, deku just have this like reaction of like oh no we're in the middle of family business aren't we and then uh fuyumi tries to like tone it down and like asking like what food he likes to eat uh shota likes to eat at school and then it just gets even more and more awkward as Natsu stands up and like Bakugo and Shoto, Bakugo and Deku are just reacting to this. And like they're still feeling nervous because they're realizing, oh no, something's going wrong. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's finish dinner and let's start cleaning up after Natsu has left the room. So they begin cleaning. And then we have like a short conversation between Bakugo and Deku where like, Deku is just asking about like, yo, Bakugo, do you know about uh, Shoto's condition? And it's like, yeah, y'all were talking about it right in front of me. And then Deku's like, wait, you were listening? And then like, he's like, yeah, but more importantly, and then we immediately cut to uh, basically uh, Shoto talking with his uh, sister and basically how she's like, yeah, uh, you know, I feel the same way as Natsu, but like, I still want us to be a family. And then we get a, a better understanding of like how Shoto feels about his father, where it's like, when he thinks of his father, he doesn't think see him as his father. He just sees him as the hero endeavor that gave him this scar. And actually, we get a small flashback to when we first uh, saw um, Shoto get the scar on his eye. And something new that we learned is that, like, we do know, like, his mother in just a fit of rage, looking at Shoto's face, just throws the hot water on him, just out of, like, pure, like, anger, desperation, and just loss of sanity. But, like, she, but what we don't know is that, 
and kind of the reason why like De Shoto is still able to visit her is because like she still feels sorry for that like as soon as she did that she's like oh my gosh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and she uses her power basically like like to like cool off like the burn area so that's something that I knew that I really enjoyed about this chapter is that we got more of like a another part of that perspective that we didn't really see which kind of explains like why a Shoto isn't mad at his mother for throwing the water in because like yes she threw the water in him so you would think that he would be just as mad as her but she also tried to help him with after she did that which plays more into what Endeavor did which means like oh yeah she did that to me but like that just doubles down on why like Endeavor was such like a horrible father because she pushed her to that point even though she might not have wanted to and so we get more perspective on Shoto where he's like yeah my mother's trying to forgive him but I don't know about me. I don't know if I should. And then you just have Bakugo just busted. And it's like, oh my gosh, you have guests over. Can you shut up? And, and it's like, just give us the plates. And like, Fubuki's like, oh my gosh, you were listening? And like, Bakugo and Deku's like, oh no. Deku's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Bakugo's just like, ah. Ah, you know parties are supposed to be fun. Now you've ruined like the taste of tofu in my mouth. It's ruined. Thanks a lot. And it's just like he's so mad, but like you can still tell that he's so sort of concerned. He's like he's he, he's a sundere. It's like I don't care about your family, but you know this is supposed to be about fun, baka. So yeah, but then we also get another uh, interchange of Deku, where Deku is just, it shows like how great he's able to like analyze and read people, where he's like, yeah, by the way, Shoto, um, yeah, you want to forgive your father, don't you? Yeah, you're, you're going to forgive your father, right? Y you are, but you're still trying to wait, am I correct? And like, he's like, he, Deku doesn't, Shoto doesn't like immediately register it and then basically uh, Deku just explains it. It's like, yeah, I understand. Like that's something like you can't really forgive. And like, you're a kind person and y you're like, you're just waiting. Like, and I understand if like you don't want to forgive him or not, but just knowing who you are as a person, I know that you want to forgive him and it's fine. You can for wait as long as you need to. So when he's saying this, like everyone is hearing this, Fuyumi is hearing this, Natsu is hearing this, even Endeavor hears this, because at first Endeavor's like, oh yeah, no, my son, she's just never gonna forgive me at all. And I think that what this shows is that if Shoto is capable of forgiving his father or wants to forgive his father, that means that even Natsu, the person who like was affected by it, but not as much as like Shoto, that he can also forgive his father as well. So it's showing that it is possible for them to forgive him but that's not the choice that they will have. That's the choice that they're going to have to make. They may never forgive him or they may forgive him. It's just for Shoto, he's the type of person who is more forgiving. And so that's something interesting. And because everyone hears it, now everyone will kind of have like a perspective on like what may happen with him in the future. And then we cut to the final few panels of the chapter where we see Endeavor carrying a food tray, thinking about his dream one more time and we see this kind of shrine and this is very traditional japanese households where uh, a lot of the times they have a shrine in a person's house to honor uh, someone who is uh, no longer with them who is dead and has like a form of respect they erect the shrine so he talks about his dream one more time and how uh, he wishes that um he could like sit at the table he has this dream where all of his family is there but then he also says he wanted you there too toya so the shrine is for Toya. So it's what is implied in this chapter is that Toya, his son, died. Now, died. Now, how did he die? We don't know. Where's the rest of his remains? We don't know. From the looks of the shrine, normally what you would do is have like the ashes of that person at your shrine. Sometimes, but like right here, we don't see it. Maybe he's in a funeral. We just don't know. But what we do know is what he finally looks like from the front, and he looks a lot like Dobby. Maybe he is Dobby. We don't know. It's just the theory. Most likely than not, it is Dobby. So yeah, at the end of the chapter, we get this like reveal, and this has to be a very impactful reveal because it was like tied to Endeavor's character building, coming to his realization that he wants to be a family, but he realizes that he may not reach that point and realizing that he has a lot to repent for, which may include the death of one of his children. So, all in all, this was a really good chapter. There was a lot of character development. 
uh, for a Shoto endeavor, just as well as just fun character interactions overall. Like I said, what I enjoy about My Hero is the interactions between the characters, especially with Bakugo, Shoto, and Deku. I really enjoy it. And there was also a lot of like realistic uh, interactions between uh, Natsu as well as his father, as well as Bakugo and Deku being in a situation like Because like, you never want to be intertwined with like another family's like problems because it just makes you feel awkward and I feel as if that was really well portrayed in this chapter. So if I could give this as the score, this is probably one of the very few times I would give it like a 4.5. It's just almost perfect. Almost perfect. If like maybe at the end we just saw like a hint of Dobby and like some confirmation that maybe Toya is Dobby. I don't know. But all in all, I thought this was a really good chapter. Mainly due to the development of uh, Shoto and Endeavor. Just more development for them. Uh, more like understanding of like Shoto as a character when it comes to like forgiving other people. As well as even the interaction between Deku and Bakuo showing them not just like as like rivals, but they're becoming more friendlier with other. Like even to a point it was like, oh, like, Bakuo says, like, oh yeah, I overheard y'all. But like he never like brought it up until like he did because he's more respectful. Heck, we even see that uh, Bakugo has significantly more respect than like you would think from someone who is as hot-handed as him. So like I said, overall, good chapter, and hopefully you'll be able to catch me with the next chapter. So until then, goodbye!